So after the OpenAI API dropped, I had this idea to create a job application manager that creates cover letters for you based on your resume and each specific job description. I was pretty excited by this idea, but was mostly just approaching it as a way to learn how to build a SaaS app around GPT. So I threw together a really simple version of the app in about three days, thanks to a couple of really great tools, which I'll talk about in a minute. I launched the app coverlettergpt.xyz on March 9th, and a month later it had over 1,000 users. So in this video, I'll give a quick code walkthrough to show you how this app works, talk about the tools that were used to build it, how I marketed it without spending any money, and how you can create your own GPT and or SaaS app using a free open source template I created. So feel free to skip around to the sections you're most interested in based on the timestamps. And if you want to see the code for yourself, I've provided links to the GitHub repos in the description. So let's jump right in. Cover Letter GPT is a cover letter generator and revision tool, as well as a job application management platform. You just paste the job description, upload a PDF of your CV or resume, and then it will generate a cover letter for you. You also have the option to edit the generated cover letters using GPT, and you can manage your jobs, create multiple cover letters per job and other stuff. So if you haven't tried it out, you can pause this video now to get a better idea of how it works. The first three credits are free and it'll give you a better idea of how the app actually works as we go through the code walkthrough. So this app was built using the Pern stack, which is Postgres, Prisma, Express, React, and Node. And I built the first version in about three to four days a lot of that speed was due to Wasp, the full stack framework I used, which allows you to define the features of your app in a config file, and it takes care of the configuration work for you. So configuring API routes, authentication, email sending, cron jobs, this is all taken care of for you by Wasp. And another tool that really helped with speed was Chakra UI, which is a set of React components that makes UI and design a lot easier. And besides that, I use Stripe for payments and of course the OpenAI API for GPT and the cover letter generation and editing. So yeah, with that intro, now let's jump into some code. Okay, so let's start with the main feature here, which is calling the OpenAI API and sending back our generated cover letter. Um, this is pretty simple, so I'll just show you the backend function that does that the generate cover letter function. So after we pass the function, the arguments it needs, um, we come down here and we've got just a few things that we have to set up, the, uh, some parameters that the OpenAI API is expecting. So we're using the GPT 3.5 or 3.5 turbo. We've got the uh, messages and the, the commands we want to send. And this command is, uh, I've got a few different options set here, but in the end I'm actually only using one, which is this one. So I'm just telling it you're a cover letter generator. You'll get some of these parameters like the job description and the CV and you need to put out a cover letter in this style. So here we go, like the content from the parsed PDF, the job title and the job description. And that's all it needs. Um, another cool thing is we have temperature, which is I've put that on the UI as the creativity control, but this tells GPT basically how rigid you want the output to be. So if you slide it all the way to the beginning there, you'll get a very standard output as I've written there. Um, I use the word creative because it's something that people can relate to, um, but basically it will vary the output more. And once we've got all those arguments set, we can send those to the OpenAI API endpoint as a post request and we will get the cover letter in the response, which we can then add to our database, which we're doing here. And it's worth mentioning that this function is not explicitly within an Express.js server, um, but Wasp knows that it's a backend function because we've defined it in the config file as an action here, otherwise known as a mutation or a write operation. So we've told Wasp that this is a backend function and we want it to access the cover letter and user entities. And what this will do is it will configure the entire Express.js server for us, build that HTTP API endpoint so we don't have to, and it'll also provide us with front-end functions 
that we can use to call this endpoint directly and get the cover letter back. So all that configuration of the server and uh, each uh, uh, specific endpoint, that's all taken care of for us. We've got, we've got this function that's created for us and we can immediately get access to the cover letter on the client side. So that's a pretty cool feature of Wasp there. And an another thing worth noticing or worth pointing out is that on this generate cover letter function on the client side, we have access to this context object with the logged in user. And this is really good for checking the credits of the user, you know, protecting the endpoints, making sure they've paid before we do any of the cover letter generation. And this is possible where we can get the logged in user via the context because Wasp has this great feature where we can just define an auth object in the config file, tell it what uh, user entity we're using and that we want to use Google auth, and then the server side functions immediately get access to the login, logged in user via the context. So this is cool because like I mentioned before, it allows us to protect our backend endpoints really easily by just checking to see if the user object exists on the context. And if not, we throw an error. And we can do the same thing for payments. We see how many credits the user has on the context object. And if there aren't enough, we throw an error and don't go through with that function. And on the client side, Wasp will also create some really cool helper functions for us like the use auth hook, which gives us access to the logged in user on the client as well as the Google sign-in URL, because it's just done all the Google OAuth2 configuration for us in the background, which is amazing. And just like we protected our backend routes, we can do the same thing on the front end very easily within the Wasp config file by defining our routes, which we've done here, which just tells us which pages or which components belong to which routes. And we just add an auth required true property to that page. And then we'll also make sure that these are only accessible to logged in users or these are protected pages. Okay, so let's change gears real quick. Besides Wasp, um, Chakra UI and React Hook Form were another couple of tools that helped me build this app really fast. And I can demonstrate that quickly by showing how form and form validation work on the main page here. So we've got the form and if I leave the CV blank, then we get an error message as you might expect. And sometimes this can be hard to code from scratch. It's a lot of, of configuration as well. Um, so I'm gonna show you how React Hook Form and Chakra UI made it very easy. So what's nice is that Chakra UI gives us these pre-built components, which we can configure and style easily. Like for example, within this form here, We've got the form control component and the input component, which allow me along with React hook form to easily register input values and get validation and error feedback, which you can see here, like another, this is the error message coming back from React hook form being put into the form error message component from Chakra UI. And React hook form, like I mentioned, takes care of all that form state for us very easily and also gives us access to some other helpful functions like set value, which I use to get the PDF upload working correctly with PDF.js. So after we let PDF.js do all its magic, parsing the PDF file to text, you can see down here, um, it's pretty complicated, but it's easy to implement and PDF.js will get each page of the PDF, get the text, loop through and convert it to a string, which we then set its value with, with the set value function. Um, so this is a really cool way to parse PDFs to text and within a form using React hook form. So after we generate the cover letter, we get this message that we can further edit it with GPT via this pop-up. And this uses a very similar function as our generate cover letter action. It's just that I've modified the prompt to say you're a cover letter editor and you'll be given a portion of the cover letter and asked to edit it. Um, so this was something I've never built before and I may have a very naive implementation here. So if anyone has any suggestions or knows a better way, go ahead and comment and let me know. Um, but what I've done is wrap the entire app 
within this mouse event listener. And if we're on the cover letter page and text has been selected, this element gets shown. And by element, I mean the um, pop-up that we just saw. So it checks for selected text, checks to see that we're on the cover letter page, and then gives the x, y coordinates of the mouse from the event. And I set those coordinates along with the text to react state. And then we show this box element here once that state um, exists. So we change it from none to block. And I've also created a React context so that the cover letter text is accessible to the popover element and to the text area element on the cover letter page. So you see here the context, we use context, and when the cover letter is actually retrieved from the back end, the one that we've already generated, we call get cover letter. And once that happens, we set it to the context state. That way the popover element has access to it as well and can call the generate edit cover letter function on the back end. So here it is, generate edit. We'll get a new value for that selected text. It'll give us a revision and then we can slice it into the original cover letter text and then set the new text area state um, via the set text area state function. And that way, by giving the text area state to that text area element, we always have the updated edited text, which we can um, send to the back end when we save changes via the uh, edit cover letter function here. So that might be a lot to take in in one go, but all the code, remember all the code is available on the GitHub repo. So you can check out everything at your own pace and then always come back to this video as a reference if something doesn't make sense. So let's switch gears a minute to talking about managing payments. And the way I manage free versus paid users is that by default on sign up, a user gets three credits. And um, they also have the possibility to buy an unlimited access for three months, which is signified by this has paid flag here. And these get updated once a user has checked out via Stripe. And I learned a lot about Stripe payments uh, by building this app and because this was my first time doing it. And I definitely made some mistakes and did not implement the most optimal payments flow. So. First, let me give a bit of background on Stripe. If you don't know that it has a, a many different ways of checking out from fully customizable to plug and play uh, payment links. So you can check out using, for example, a one-time purchase or subscription-based products. And I naively used one-time payments, which is denoted by this mode here. And if you change that to subscription instead of payments, you'll be good to go. Um, but you need to configure that product correctly first. Uh, luckily for you, I learned from my mistake and I used the subscription product checkout flow with webhooks when I created this free GPT SaaS template, which I've linked to in the description. And I basically distilled all the stuff I learned from making cover letter GPT into a more generic template to be the starting point for creating any kind of SaaS app you'd like with GPT or not. And it's free and entirely open source, so check that out if you're interested. Anyway, um, I'll run through the process that I use for the SaaS template since it's much better. And first you need to go to your Stripe dashboard to configure your Stripe product. Make sure that you have test mode enabled and add a new product. And when you do, you fill in the information, like the name and the description make sure you have software as a service uh, selected for the product category. And then down here, you will add your price and make sure you have the recurring button selected and you can select your uh, re recurring rate. Super simple, let's keep it monthly for this example and save product. Then when you have the product save, you're going to want to go down and copy the product API ID and save it as an environment variable in your .env.server file. And after that, you'll want to create and expose a custom API endpoint for the Stripe webhook. 
In Wasp, you can also define the back end logic just like you did with actions, but by defining it as a API object in the config file and adding the HTTP route tuple, you get a nicely configured externally facing endpoint for Stripe to push its notifications to. So whenever a user has completed a payment, um, Stripe sends out a notification to our webhook endpoint, which we've configured in the dashboard. And, and our endpoint will check that the, um, for different uh, event types. So like this one here you see is the checkout session completed. And from the request body, we can get different information. And from there, we can get the session ID and get the line items. And then we check the line items, which are the purchase products, if the line item ID is equal to the price ID that we s copied and set in our environment variables. And if it is, then we find that user and we update their has paid property to true so they can access the app. Um, there are other things that we can do, like we can check for the event type um, customer subscription updated. And if on the subscription object, there is a cancel at period true property, that means that they've canceled their subscription, but it's still active until the end of the month. So with that knowledge, we can send out, for example, a, an email to the customer, um, maybe with an offer telling them, hey, we don't want you to go, um, here's a discount. And um, Wasp makes this really easy to do because it has an email sender um, option that you can configure really easily in the config file. But before I show you that, there's also the event type cons customer subscription deleted, which is actually at the end of the month when the subscription is over after they've canceled, it's done, you get that event and you can set the user's has paid flag to false so they no longer can access the app. Like I said, um, to enable the email sender functionality, we just go into the Wasp config file and up at the top under the app object, we can set an email sender object and we can use any SMTP or email provider. Uh, here we're using SendGrid. So we just um, log in and create an account with SendGrid, get our API key, set that in the environment variables and we're good to go. And with that, we can import the email sender object um, which is up here. And directly from Wasp, we get this email sender object and we can use that to send off emails in our backend code. All right, so that pretty much covers all the main features within the app. And I just wanted to touch on marketing for a moment. First of all, I honestly did not expect the response to be as positive as it has. I knew it had potential, but I just really went into the project as a learning project for myself so I could learn how to build a product around GPT and integrate payments with Stripe. So that's why I always intended to open source this app and share the code with everyone. And as a side effect of that, while I've been building in public and sharing my progress, this has made people a lot more responsive on social media platforms whenever I plug the project. Because I always mention that this is completely open source, so anyone can learn from it, fork it, remix it, whatever they wanna do. So my main takeaway from this might be to share as much as you possibly can. In a way, give more than you're selling. Don't forget you have to first create a product that people want and enjoy using. And without that, this approach won't, won't really work. On top of that, I took my idea to IndieHackers.com, which is a great community of people, mostly building SaaS side businesses and allowed people to use the app completely free of charge without needing to log in at all. Again, I gave away a lot as I was working on it and adding more features. So the response was great and Cover Letter GPT ended up landing in their newsletter, which goes out to over 100,000 people, which probably definitely helped for the initial boost. All right, so I think that about wraps it up. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I hope you learned something new here. And if you're looking to start your own SaaS with or without GPT, or just experiment with building a full stack SaaS style app, I've linked both cover letter GPT and the SaaS template repositories in the description. So go ahead and use those however you see fit, build something cool with them, and please, when you do, share them with me here in the comments or over on Twitter.